mostly we are seeing it's more prevalent in the younger generations basically it's a disease uh, which was uh, not very common with yen but nowadays we have seen more uh, gi related cancer in younger age group between 20 to 40 screening is one of the most important modality to get these cancers very early so what are the major symptoms that patients have when they come to you? um uh, it all depends on where the cancer is starting there are few red flag uh, symptoms which is very important to pick it up mm. uh, irrespective of the age got it and can it reoccur once it has been treated yes uh, very true uh, the thing is uh, the mutations already happened Mm. and uh, that risk stays for the entire life mm. but uh, colorectal cancer is one of the cancers where even still stage 4 is completely curable in at least 25% of the patients when managed properly Hi everyone I am Pallavi I am a lifestyle and corporate influencer and today I have the privilege to have Dr Lohit with myself he is the senior consultant surgical gastroenterology bariatric and gi oncology at sarjapur manipal hospitals so uh, we'll start from the topic gastro um, intestinal cancer mostly we are seeing it's more prevalent in the younger generations yes. so my question is for you is that why is it so prevalent for the younger generations um basically it's a disease uh, which was uh, not very common with yen but uh, with the change in lifestyle the uh, uh, life uh, lifestyle the environmental risk factors our the diet habits uh, lack of physical activity has led to change in the pattern of the uh, disease mm-hmm. and as such we are getting more commonly these days in an younger age group uh, when when we say younger age group what mm-hmm. is the age group that we are referring to uh, see as i said it was most common in age group more than 50 mm. and uh, so hence we used to start screening at age of 45 okay but nowadays we have seen more uh, gi related cancer in younger age group between 20 to 40 mm. so that is the age group which i am speaking of uh, mm. there is more incidence of gi cancers which is on the rise uh, in uh, indian population mm. especially in between 20 to 40 years of age Okay and when we are saying about gastrointestinal cancer what are the different types of gastrointestinal cancer so there are multiple uh, types of uh, gi related cancers mm-hmm. uh, gi gastrointestinal related cancers mainly include uh, the colorectal cancer uh, which is large intestine related other cancers are uh, like esophagus that is food pay, food food pipe uh, stomach related cancers small intestine uh, that is small small intestine cancers and uh, other solid organs like liver pancreas gall bladder they are also pretty uh, common but not as common as colorectal cancer the colorectal cancer incidence has raised in off late for the younger generation younger or generation. for overall uh, not really for overall in younger generation okay yes. all right yes. these are the types of cancer which we come across okay and what are the kind of screening processes or take uh, you know the different technologies that are there to understand it better yeah so screening is one of the most important modality to get these cancers very early uh, so for an example for colorectal cancer if we can detect early uh, so they start with a polyp that means a small projection on the colon which can like eventually a yeah probably a cyst or a polyp is like a skin tag or something mm. which will develop inside the colon mm. and they grow over a period of 4 to 5 years to form a cancer so okay. if we can detect as early as in a polyp stage mm. and uh, by just doing a colonoscopy mm. it can be completely cured mm. so hence it is important to screen them so mm. what our general guidelines say is at age of 45 plus mm. uh, every fifth yearly we advise to do colonoscopy mm. and yearly a fecal occult blood that means to say we do a stool test to see if there's any blood in the stools mm. so these polyps generally uh, fall off to form some amount of blood in the stools which may not be visible to our naked eyes mm. so yearly once we collect cut blood and five yearly once colonoscopy is what generally we advise but in patients who have very strong family history there is a family history of colon cancer like genetics you are mentioning yeah genetically if they are uh, uh, they are predisposed like they have a fa- significant uh, family history of mm. brother sister or parents having colon colon cancer or some other gi related cancer and also some cancers related to uh, uterus mm. are closely related closely are having some kind of genetic predisposition mm. in those kind of subset we start early like if we say if we have detected a colon cancer in the family at 30 we start 10 years earlier than that that is 20 years at which of age group we start doing the screening test which i mentioned you about 
Okay. And as I understand that it is mostly the gastrointestinal cancer is mostly on the Rice. on those organs mm. uh, like like you mentioned like liver, stomach liver uh, all of yeah. that so what are the major symptoms that patients have when they come to you um uh, it all depends on where the cancer is starting hmm. the foot pipe is where if the cancer is hmm. uh, the patient will have issues with uh, say uh, taking the food in they'll be uh, they feel the food is stuck in the chest or something hmm. uh, stomach related cancers or colon uh, large intestine related cancer the most often they're not present with weakness hmm. and some amount of change in bowel habits that means to say they may have altered altered stools like some days they may have constipation some day they may have uh, uh, loose stools mm. some days they may have uh, blood in stools mm. and some amount of significant weight loss but the difficult part of it is diagnosis in younger age group because mm. in young early stages they are totally asymptomatic mm. they don't really have any symptoms and to they start can also think it is some other reason like whatever yeah. you said it could be That's a stomach true. infection That's a fact. yeah, yeah. So as we say uh, in Eng, we don't uh, until unless we are aware of it, mm. uh, or we don't uh, think of it, we don't try to diagnose them. Mm. Uh, we generally uh, diagnose them as saying simple gastritis, a dyspepsia, mm. or an hemorrhoids, mm. uh, like a piles or uh, some IBS symptoms. So generally, they are misguided or misdiagnosed for a very long long time before mm. they actually develop or diagnosed eventually in an younger age group. Okay. Elderly age group, we are pretty straightforward. We generally keep thinking of those kind of issues in an mm. elderly age group. But younger age group, we generally think of uh, other issues, like mm. other benign issues where there is no cancer associated. Got it. Yeah. So when we are saying it is mostly younger generation as a 20 years and upwards. Yeah. So how do you understand that these people have the, their symptoms are so serious. So mm -hmm. like you mentioned that they have to come again mm -hmm. and again to understand that yeah. uh, probably because it's asymptomatic. Yes. True. So for the age group of 20 and say 20 to 30. So mm. did they get these uh, symptoms much earlier? Yeah, so uh, there are few red flag uh, symptoms which is very important to pick it up mm. uh, irrespective of the age. One is family history. Whenever you speak to the patient, you have to always take a good family history of any kind of cancers mm. uh, which kind of guides us uh, if there is any risk. Mm. Uh, the next is unexplained weight loss. Uh, it could be there's a chances, there are chances where uh, an younger age group patient would come to us with significant weight loss saying that uh, uh, they, though they didn't intend to do so much weight loss but they did lose weight mm. they would generally feel happy but uh, something right. which uh, should be replied to us where uh, we have to uh, uh, evaluate them properly if it was an unintentional weight loss mm. and uh, any blood in stools like if they had a vomiting of blood or there's a blood in stools is something which we should not easily ignore a proper physical examination ruling out any obvious causes are important and mm. treat them and follow them up uh, in a very short interval if the symptoms are reduced and if there's like chota mota issues which we have treated and they get better then it's fine if they're not getting better that's when we have to uh, investigate further with colonoscopies or Got it. Mm. So as we understand that genetic history is one of the most predefining yes. factors, what are the other things like what are the risk factors for which people can be exposed to it who don't have a genetic history? Yeah. So uh, our own lifestyle is the most important factor. Mm. Uh, poor lifestyle, not eating at regular intervals, uh, uh, physically uh, not being active, uh, 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 red meat is one of the risk factors, smoking, alcohol, okay. Uh, these are the most common risk factors which we come across. Mm. So having good lifestyle, doing regular exercises, uh, good amount of fibers in the diet like fruits, vegetables, salads. So this, see basically what happens with all these uh, risk factors is they increase the inflammation. Say mm. uh, you, are, uh, you have a very poor lifestyle, you are not eating well, uh, you are too much on smoking alcohol and you are on too much of red meat. Though you mm. end up having a lot of inflammation in the gut mm. which eventually causes those mutations which may not be predisposed because of genetics but they have ended they end up with mutations causing these cancers in a Got very it. short term yeah. and so how often should they do the screening for the younger generation so again uh, if there is screening is again done only in patients with genetic factors Say if there is a strong <clears throat> family history hmm. that's the only time when we advise screening right. or else it's all depends on the symptoms hmm. so screening is done in 45 age group plus okay anything that less is than, advisable for 45 yeah 45 plus. age plus it's guidelines okay. not just advice it's for just male guidelines. female both yeah both it's just okay. uh, very uh, very much in the guidelines saying that you should start your screening at 45 hmm. it was previously 50 now it is cut down to 45 in, in, in recent guidelines uh, but any anybody less than 45 is about uh, meeting them 
uh, understanding the symptoms and if there's any significant family history we start 10 years before their uh, previous family history or uh, age group got it uh, and what are the different way of treatment or surgeries okay. are, they, are they all invasive uh, yeah uh, not really if you can detect them early hmm. as i said especially in colorectal cancers hmm. uh, uh, where uh, there is uh, polyps which they develop and then eventually they turn cancer over a period of 5 years hmm. so we have a whole whole 5 years to actually treat them without any kind of surgery okay uh, is a simple colonoscopy through which uh, we can clear these polyps mm. uh, and then we can eradicate the cancer as such mm. so these kind of simple tests are there mm. uh, but in a patient who have already developed a cancer that mm. means to say the polyp has already turned as a stage 1 cancer mm. is where a surgical uh, intervention comes into picture uh the good part now is we the evolution uh, evolu- medical evolution says mm. like because of which there is more of new technologies wherein laparoscopy has come into big mm. role uh, wherein we can do major surgeries of say colon pancreas or liver mm. everything through laparoscope uh, and then there will be minimal to next to next to zero yeah. incisions and uh, the recovery is much faster mm. uh, and there is uh, that's how the recovery is much faster and you can give the same amount of uh, clearance when it comes to tumor as in open in nowadays with laparoscopy got it so the intervention wise it's much minimal invasive as of today mm. even when it becomes a cancer only in some locally advanced cancer where there multiple organ involvement that's when probably a much bigger intervention like an open surgery may be required mm. otherwise laparoscopy or robot is still around and we can do great jobs with these days got it and after the surgery what are the post treatment take okay. care that they have to do uh, say uh, for an example we we have treated a colorectal cancer as i said all these cancers have particular fixed guidelines say we uh, follow them up every 3 months we once Uh, with specific blood test mm. there are some cancer markers which we do pre op pre surgery okay. and then we follow with the same markers post surgery every quarterly mm. uh, irrespective of which cancer it is be it pancreatic colon or liver cancers and then um, uh, we do in a colon cancer uh, we do a uh, ct scan uh, yearly once and a colonoscopy after an year to see if there's any polyps there and if there's no polyps at the end of one year we can do them after 5 years the colonoscopy again so there are specific uh, mm. set guidelines on uh, follow up which is usually quarterly got it and can it reoccur once it has been treated yes uh, very true uh, the thing is uh, once there's a genetic mutation in the body mm. whether it is familial or it is just de novo uh, that means they they just developed it mm. because of the poor lifestyle the mutations already happened Mm. and uh, that risk stays for their entire life so those are the patients which can be managed with close follow ups mm. as i said they all they all start with polyps mm. so if they come at least once in a year for follow up we mm. can cure them we well, we can make sure they don't develop this cancer okay and uh, colorectal cancer is the one of these cancers which can be cured even in stage 4 there typically four stages mm. uh, in any cancer 1 2 3 4 four being the max the last stage the so called mm. but uh, colorectal cancer is one of the cancers where even st- stage 4 is completely curable in at least 25% of the patients when managed properly so it's pretty uh, the medical advances are good uh, mm. if they can follow up on a regular basis even if they recur if there is some amount of recurrence we can still cure them actually okay. cure them not just control it cure mm. them so in continuation with what you mm. said mm. Uh, is it fatal for few patients um again as i said it depends on the stage they come or present mm. with say uh, if it is involving say say pancreatic cancer or a gallbladder cancer involving multiple organs mm. yes it is pretty uh, poor prognosis even stomach cancers are pretty uh, if it is so stage 4 mm. it is poor prognostic i mean it is very difficult to uh, cure, cure them we can only control them with chemotherapy and make the progression halt mm. uh, but we cannot cure such kind of patients mm. but in colorectal cancers we do have options uh, very rarely we do get ch- situations where even colorectal cancers have spread to multiple organs more than one organ where uh, we cannot uh, really treat them completely mm. that's very small set subset of patients most of them do come early or at least uh, because in colorectal cancer we have all four stages which can be curable 
uh, no, unlike any pancreatic cancer or gallbladder cancers where even like only stage 1 and 2 or 3 at max can be curable hmm. 4 is never curable in such kind of cancers but yeah colorectal cancers are curable even in stage 4 right so just to sum up the entire mm-hmm. conversation that we were having and mostly mm-hmm. pertaining to the age group of 20 to yeah. 40 per se what are the key takeaways that you will be asking the younger generation to take care of the screening and everything like yeah. in short if you have to so Sometimes. i would say uh, prevention mm. having a good lifestyle mm. uh, uh, having good amount of uh, fibers in the diet like fruits vegetables right on a regular day on a regular basis good physical activity at least half an hour a day five days in a week mm. uh, and if they can avoid or quit smoking and alcohol mm. uh, that would take the uh, that would reduce the risk quite a bit and the red meat uh, like yeah orange. red meat hmm. uh, that would reduce the risk quite a lot hmm. uh, and if there are any alarming symptoms like significant weight loss hmm. the hemoglobin is low less than 10 hmm. which is not to be there in an younger population like an elderly population with pure nutrition they we can expect less than 10 but in an younger hmm. population who is eating normally hmm. should never be less than 10 hmm. uh, so these are the basic things if they have right. any blood in stool say significant weight loss and hemoglobin less than 10 these are the things which they have to uh, get pro at the or get checked at. properly hmm. uh, with a proper specialist and they will pick it up most of them right and the genetic history that we already yeah, spoke genetic, about yes, they have to be true. very aware and proactive to yeah. meet the surgeons beforehand right if their family significant family history there's there's an young patient or a person in their family is with colorectal any kind of g related cancer it is important they get on for regular follow up hmm. or at least get the pro- genetic profile checked it can be checked even in a normal condition got it thank you so much doctor you, do you want to say anything at the end to the audience nothing stay fit eat well stay fit that's all take care thank you so much thank you so much